We have also like a single lady there. Single. Walter is also single. <laughs> Walter is single. Yeah. So we are doing the, the interview portion on this, uh, that room. Yeah. Okay, ciao ragazzi, ciao a tutti. Ci troviamo qui, attenzione, a Leganes, nella provincia di Iloilo, nelle Filippine. Sono contentissimo perché finalmente riesco a realizzare un'intervista che avrei voluto fare molto molto tempo fa. Come sapete all'interno di questo canale parliamo tanto anche di viaggio, di cultura, di costume, di lifestyle e quindi attenzione oggi ho con me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 teachers, 6 insegnanti, quindi gli chiederemo un po' di domande, cercheremo di capire e carpire qualcosa in più sulla cultura e sui costumi filippini. Ok, so I was just saying something to Italian public that we just doing like a little interview, informal interview to understand something more about your culture, your customs and habits and everything that we can learn from you since we are Italian and we are really like let's say curious about what you do, why you do it, values, everything. So Let's start. Just one thing in Italian more. Allora, ultima cosa, l'intervista sarà interamente in inglese, però ti metto qui da qualche parte un modo per attivare le caption in italiano, ok? Di modo che tu possa seguirla. Non posso tradurla in tempo reale perché diverrebbe un video davvero, davvero troppo lungo. Tra l'altro oggi stranamente sono molto emozionato, I'm really excited. So, let's start with Mr. Uh, Christian. Hi everyone, my name is Christian Roche. And I've been teaching like five years here in Laganes National High School. And I'm handling the TVL track, the Technical Vocational Livelihood track. And it's more on the uh, specialization in cookery. Hi, everyone. I'm Anjali L. Auron. I am from Laganes. And I am a teacher here at Laganes National High School, teaching General Biology 1 and research subjects. Hello, I'm Girlie Buiko. I'm from Laganes, and I have more than seven years of teaching experience, both in the private and public schools based here in the Philippines. And now I am teaching Practical Research 2 and Physical Science for the grade 12 students. Hello everyone, especially to our Italian friends. This will be shown in Italy, right? Yeah. Uh, of course, it's YouTube. My name is Lani Astandarte and I'm teaching um, in the senior high school department all English-related subjects. Wow. Yes, that's it. Hello everyone, I'm Chris Camille Antoinette S. Balboa. I'm teaching uh, the bread and pastry production. I have... Uh, five years experience in teaching already and I also teach um, contemporary Philippine art forms from the region. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to our school, uh, welcome to Philippines and especially in our town Leganes. Uh, I've been here for uh, 11 years at Leganes National High School. I've been teaching the junior high school and this time I am teaching the senior high school, the grade 12 and I'm teaching an uh, introduction to the philosophy of the human person. So, let's start. Now, let's do the turn back. Um, why did you choose to become a teacher? But please be honest, okay? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I don't have a plan to become a teacher before. It is not my first priority to, to be a teacher. And I think um, later on, as years goes by, I have found out that when I have, I mean, uh, enrolled in a teaching, teaching career, I just love the teaching. That's why, I don't know if it's a blessing, but indeed it was, because uh, I am now still in this uh, profession where I am enjoying what I am doing right yeah. now. Yeah, I think teaching is one of the best career you can, let's say, you can get. Let's say I'm not a teacher, but I teach online and I coach some people about photography and this kind of stuff. So I know that when you really love the, um, let's say, the subject, it's so amazing that you can share with, with the world. Yes. And, yes. Yes. and it's fulfilling. Do you want to answer? Okay. Who okay. wants to answer? Can yeah, you? me actually, um, well, my preparation in college is not an educational degree. I am actually a um, communication graduate, so I do not really think of myself. Well, I was not able to, well, I did not think that I'm going to be a teacher in the future, 
But then sometimes our plans do not work out, right? Yeah. So wherever we're, we're supposed to be led by God, then we will be directed to a specific, um, you know, path. Or, or always. yeah, always. So I, I'm a mass com graduate or mass communication graduate, and then I worked in in a hospital. But then one day I realized that I I want to teach. It's like. It's like, like for me, like, yeah, like a sort of vocation. yeah. So, so I, I did proceed to taking um, a diploma in, in in education in teaching, and then I've been working as a teacher for five years now, and I was never as fulfilled as I am right now. So I guess this is really is my calling. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah, it. That's your calling for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hello. Uh, in my case, I became a teacher since I came from a family of educators. My aunts, my uncles, my cousins, and I, in, in the seven of us, we are seven siblings in the family, uh, three of us are educators. One is teaching in a university, another one is in a public school, and I'm here in Leganes. Um, when I was a child, I, uh, I wanted to be a lawyer, I wanted to be a, you know, a part of the cruise line, to travel abroad, to explore other countries. But you know, I have this feeling that uh, uh, I might regret not taking education as my course because I love kids, I love to, to talk in front of the students, to, to motivate them, to inspire them, and be an instrument of their success later on. For me, I choose to be a teacher uh, because uh, my mother is also a teacher. So growing up from a family of teachers and my aunts are also teachers. I choose this uh, profession because uh, I believe that this uh, profession is the noblest of all profession. Uh, we inspire, we teach, and we encourage and motivate learners. Yeah. And you set also the, let's say, what's what's going on in our future because of course the the yes. kids that you train will become adults and will become politicians and doctors and whatever and so yeah, yeah really yeah. really amazing but so let's move on because now there are like the question that i it's not this one but we we getting like always deeper and deeper so what's the real values of filipino people but wait so for values, of course, I mean, I don't know, family, friendship, career, money, whatever. First, what's Filipino values? And then for you, what are the most important in your okay. life? For me, the most important value that the Filipino possess is that we are very accommodating. Yeah. We welcome visitors. We, um, um, what do you call that? Um, with open arms, we allow them to be part of the family. Mm -hmm. We let them feel that uh, our place feels like home. Yeah. Because in my case, in my own experience, I have five friends, and the owner, first owner of our house is living in the Italy now. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's uh, my aunt. And... She usually shares Italian values and other in the culture of Italy. But in my case, we Filipinos are very accommodating, and that's for sure. We'll tell our, our foreign friends or the world that uh, it's safe to be here in the Philippines. Yeah, yeah, it uh, feels like home to be here in the Philippines. In a deeper sense, for me, the value of Filipinos, we are like very close to our family. We really give so much importance to family. Um, family comes first. Like, for example, if you have a job, you're supposed to think of your family. Like, how could you provide for your family? Um, because I heard, like, in other cultures, in other countries, um, they, well, people in any part of the world really gives importance with, give importance with family, right? But it's really different here in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. What's the, what's the main difference? Um, it's 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 because uh, we we really sh like for example let, let me give you one practical example, sir. I for example, if your parents are old already, I heard that in other countries there's like home for the aged, and you have to bring your yes. your families, and there's no problem with that. Home for the aged are uh, well, the, those homes are really good, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're taking care of our olds. But in the Philippines, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. Our parents, when they're very old, they stay with us. We, we we take care of them. We feed them. We bathe them. 
them. So make sure that they're very close to us. So it's like I, 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 I heard or I was able to watch one video of a woman, an Asian. She said that she doesn't have to make an appointment in order to meet his or her, her um, to meet um, parents. her parent, yeah. Okay. So that's, that's, that's one example here in the Philippines. We really love our, our parents, our, our grandparents, Amazing. and we give so much importance to, to family. I can say to our Italian friends that it's true 200%, not just 100%, because <laughs> now I live in a Christian house and I can see yeah. that they do care more than my family. So, <laughs> so it's true. They're super accommodating and super uh, kind. Yeah. Wow, someone else want to reply to this question or we move yeah. on to the next one? Um, I think one of also one of the most important values that Filipinos possess is that uh, most of us are God-fearing. So whatever we do, either we take exam, we have a little problem or we are facing uh, something difficult, the first thing that we are uh, doing usually is to pray in order to have enlightenment in order to have solution to our problems. So we feel that we are guided. We feel that our, uh, our uh, problems have solutions if we pray. So also Philippines is one of uh, those Catholic countries. That's why, maybe that's why, uh, what's the reason why we are all God-fearing, most of us, if mm -hmm. not all. So let's say religion plays a big part yeah. for all of you. Yes. Wow, so amazing. Or faith. Faith. Wow. Okay. Okay. Really nice. So, we are in Leganes, but we are really close to Iloilo, right? Yes. And I know that Iloilo is called the city of love. Yes. So, why Iloilo is the city of love? Um, Iloilo is called city of love because we are all lovable. Uh, for example, um, we accommodate, we are very accommodating in, uh, in terms with our um, visitors. And uh, even though um, we, uh, we have problems or uh, we have problems with, uh, with our family, um, after that, we settled easily. Okay. Yes, that's why we call it a city of love. Okay, so is it true that it's called the city of love also because of the way you talk like oh, that yeah, you're yeah. super kind and the, your yeah, yeah and your voice is super smooth and even if you let's say argue yeah. and yeah. fight yeah. you're always always it's like okay. that, sir. Told you. <laughs> is it like an observation or someone told you that uh both because we are <laughs> oh, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I research also. Even actually people from other parts of the Philippines, they say that Ilongos, uh, even though we're angry, we don't sound like we're angry because we, we, we sound sweet. Yeah. So that could be probably one of the reasons, yeah. yeah. The city of love. Uh, why we're called we the city of this, love, like, yeah. certain accent. We have this certain accent that makes us, uh, that's what you, uh, they said. Uh, yeah, yeah. Unique we are uni uh, unique. Yeah, yeah. yeah unique. Yeah. So I want to know for you, especially as a Filipino, what happiness means to you? What's for you the real meaning behind the word happiness? Okay. For me, uh, happiness uh, is like you are being contented of what you have. Because uh, if you're happy of having certain like this and you're contented about it, and for me, it's uh, happiness. It's already success. Because if you keep on searching for these things like that in this world, if you don't have any contentment, for sure you're gonna feel bad, you're gonna feel frustrated, disappointed. But when it comes to happiness like this, like we gather together, we talk together, simple things. This may be like um, sharing problems, like being there when you need somebody, uh, eating together with just simple foods. It doesn't matter how or the, the price of the food, even just the isaw, the, the, like the street foods, and then we're happy about it. And for me, it's happiness. And also when we were young, like when we were students, for us, happiness means achieving our goals 
success equals for us happiness and happiness is like achieving your goals your dreams your ambitions but now personally to me that i'm you know a bit older already for me like christian happiness is just living simply having a harmonious relationship with others and being able to sleep peacefully at night that wow. equals the happiness now yeah wow. Um, I agree. I just want to add that I agree with the statement of Christian that happiness depends on the contentment of a person because uh, I think uh, every person has a different pacing in life. So though you are living a simple life, you, like for example, uh, there are different you know, uh, works or opportunities for all of us. Others are earning very high like, uh, you know, a hundred thousand pesos per month but in our case we're just earning a range of 25,000 to 30,000 pesos per month but I know I I think you would agree all of you would agree that we are all happy because we are contented of what we are now because we are staying uh, with our family and uh, we, our home is near we, to our workplace. And at the same time, we are happy because we are here to inspire, to motivate, and help students to reach their dream in the future. And also, um, happiness depends on state of mind. Yeah. If you're happy with what you are now, then, I mean, if you're contented with what you are now, I think you'll be happy because there are lawyers or other bigger positions who, uh, that uh, earns bigger salaries, but I think they're not that so happy because they want more. That's they want all, more in life. I, I think it's all over the world, not yeah. just in the Philippines, because, yeah. of course, let's say, the principles of the mind, of the yeah. psychology, it's the same all over the world. Yeah. Maybe we can change the values, maybe we can change the culture, the customs, but the way our minds work, it's the same. We just condition in different ways exactly. since we were children. Yes. So, example, for you Filipinos, family, it's super important. For Italian, should be important also, but let's say things change a lot in the last, let's say, 30 years, maybe. So, let's say that Happiness, for you all, if I can say, it's about simple things. Yes. It's about being contented with what you have. It's not so much about ambitions, but it's about being present, having a, a strong sense of uh, unity, connection with others, with family, with friends, with colleagues. And uh, it's not so much about career, because the next question I want to ask you is about career. So let's say. You already replied to me about the average salary in the Philippines. So let's say it's about 20 to 30,000 pesos. Quindi sono circa intorno ai 400-500 euro al mese. Forse anche qualcosa in meno. So you think, is it a fair salary? You think, is it enough to live? Then we will move on to the next question. But you think it's enough or maybe you think, you know what, cost of living is too much, maybe we should get more. Whatever it's your, let's say, your opinion, it's okay, it's fine. There's no judgment about it. Since I've mentioned the range of our salary, honestly, I would say that it's not enough to, to raise a family. For example, I'm living with my parents and they're both seniors. Mm -hmm. Though my siblings, they also have their work, but... Uh, I'm the youngest among the seven siblings. So with that, my siblings have their own family as well. So I'm the one living with my parents and uh, my nephews. Mm. So um, my salary is not enough since the cost of living is getting high mm. as, you know, years go by. The, the price of the... The gasoline for cars, for cooking. Similar to Italy. Yes. The gas and the gasoline, it's really expensive. Yes. So in my case, I'm paying for the car, I'm paying for the gasoline, for the maintenance, for our food, for the electricity. It's really not enough for us to, to live, you know, a luxurious life. But uh, since we're very, we're happy, though we're living a simple life, so that's fine. However, um, we are teachers here in the Philippines are demanding for higher salaries yeah. to be to, to to get paid higher than the you know the range. But uh, the fact is, there's a lot of teachers 
all over the Philippines. So the, it's hard for the government to implement mm -hmm. a higher salary to for, salary yeah, to increase the, teachers, the salary yeah. for all it's the like teachers. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, salary is not enough. Uh, teachers complain about their salaries, but seeing our learners uh, go and uh, become professionals, the amount of our salary is uh, more than the amount of happiness that they gave us seeing them uh, become professionals someday. Because uh, they always say teaching is a vocation. That's why um, the government is uh, not uh, really um, pursuing to get our, uh, our salary yeah. uh, higher. And uh, also, Gurley says that uh, um, the government uh, cannot easily um, provide, provide because so we have a lot of uh, teachers are all over the Philippines are great uh, so are great many, many. We're so many so many it's hard for the government yes especially yeah. right now that we we all experience the pandemic mm -hmm. so somehow we understand the status of the government right now that it's hard for the government to increase our salary because the Philippines has a really big yeah, debt right now but debt. we are yeah, really true. hoping and praying yeah. for the increase of our yes. salary yeah so let's move to the consequent question about this so what's I mean I know that it's hard to reply but just try okay what's the let's say average cost of living in the Philippines. So I know that most of you live with big families and maybe you can you, you don't need to you don't need to tell us exactly but let's say average because of course let's say Italian people want to know let's say for us it's maybe it's around 1500 euro something like that maybe a little bit more and uh, I did the a few videos before talking about Chinese and Thai, Thailand, Thai people and saying that they can live with 300 euros, that it's almost, um, let's say, 30,000 pesos. And, and Italian people were really angry because they cannot stand that they can live with so little. But so that's why I want you, that you are real Filipinos, I'm just here, but I'm not Filipino, I want you to tell the truth about like the cost of um, living. In my case, I guess 30,000 pesos per month will help you live a very simple life here. Um, I think we have that notion that the teachers, we work to live. We work to pay our bills. We work to pay our food and other expenses. Um, the 30 pesos a month 30, is 30,000 pesos a month, or rather, is actually enough. It's just enough for us to survive in that one month with four of us in the family. Mm. And, you know, um, others, the fact is, others. Other teachers here from the government are going abroad, mm -hmm. like they're teaching outside the Philippines for them to provide yeah, um, better family. life for their families. Yeah. So in our case, the 30,000 pesos a month will just help us to survive in the entire month with the food, with the bills, without savings, without insurances, and without going to expensive restaurants, yeah. And that's for the four of us in the family. I don't know with teachers who have three or more children who are studying in college or with babies to support uh, every day. Yeah. That's why in my case, um, I do extra job mm -hmm. so that uh, I can provide um, the fa for my family. Yes, I do... Um, uh, making cakes, oh, wow. yes, um, baking cakes. And my father also has a business, so catering services. That's why uh, we need to do double jobs in order for, for us to survive. In my case, uh, since uh, especially that we experienced this uh, pandemic, the cost of living here uh, uh, goes uh, uh, very hard uh, for us to adjust. But then, uh, we should be contented of what we have. We learn to adjust and uh, make ways to improve uh, the way of our living. Yeah, that's, that's why they say that when people, like that's always like in the Philippines, can be, you know, in the south of Italy, can be in Thailand, when they have less resources, they become more resourceful. So, of course, they find way to support family, to raise money, to raise children, kids, whatever. 
And um, yeah, that's why you are more creative. Since you always like anticipate my question, <laughs> would you like to travel abroad to support your family or just to raise money or whatever is your reason? So oh, please. Yes, uh, yeah, for me, it's a yes. Uh, one thing that uh, I have learned here living in the Philippines is that if you have this job teaching career, although you could uh, survive in a daily life basis, but then later on, as you go older and your parents are getting old, of course you are worried of their health. And one more thing is that for me it's a dilemma when, when you're working uh, in a government, in a teaching career, in a public school, and it could not help or support the health um, issues of your parents, especially hospital hospitalization here in the Philippines is very high. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it, it took like millions ju just to add uh, another life to your parents if they are, if they are sick. 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 Mm -hmm. And that's my dilemma. But if I have a chance to go abroad and save money, and then maybe I'm more secure that I could save money and my family back home would not uh, suffer and of course, uh, bringing them in a hospital where they could, you know, uh, cater all their needs. Because it's really hard seeing your family that you cannot afford to let them, you know, uh, in the hospital because you don't have money. So as a young professional, if given the chance to work abroad, I'd say I'd go for it. So I'd like to also, aside from uh, raising an enough amount of money for retirement, I think it would be also a good opportunity to us to know the culture, the culture of other countries, how they live, uh, their values, their food. And uh, I think it's a great opportunity to explore, to know yourself. Yeah. Outside from being uh, in the Philippines, you will have to discover more of yourself. Um, there's a lot of Filipinos who go abroad and work there. Uh, as what we have said a while ago, we are family-oriented. Though we are living a simple life, as long as we live with the family, we are very happy and contented. However, the fact that, uh, you know, we're going abroad, and do, I mean other teachers, other professionals go abroad, it's a sacrifice for them. A sacrifice that they will be a foreigner in that uh, certain country. They don't have their comfort zone there. They don't have their family, or they don't have someone to go to if they, yeah, if they're sick. Mm -hmm. So, for me, um, though we are very family oriented, if given an opportunity to work abroad, I'll take the chance. I, I really have to take the chance. Um, the reason is I can provide. For my family, they can live a better life, though it's, uh, you know, somewhat opposite for me. If I'll be in abroad, I'll be lonely, I'll be alone. Maybe you'll be less happy, but yes. you'll find a way See to your family them. happy. And for me, my family is my happiness. Seeing them happy, though I'm far, it's just okay for me than, you know, living in one house and uh, uh, it's hard for us to survive our daily, base, uh, daily basis, I mean, to survive daily. So I'll take the chance, that yeah. sacrifice that everyone says a Filipino sacrifice for their family. For me, I want to make it different. For me, it's a no. I won't go outside the country to work. I would probably to, to, do, to have vacation, to enjoy, mm -hmm. but to really work in a faraway place, I won't, I won't probably, I would I'll probably say no. I would prefer to stay here in, uh, with my parents, with my family, mm -hmm. uh, probably do anything that I can in order for me to increase my income, but I would definitely stay here in the Philippines and not work abroad mm -hmm. and just go there outside for vacation purposes. Me also, I'm contented here in the in Iloilo, because uh, I have my family here. I have two kids, so I and also um, I can survive because I do extra jobs. Yeah, so I'm contented here. For me, uh, given a chance to go to abroad, why not? Oh, why not? <laughs> Why is it that I will not uh, experience uh, or gain new experience in other countries? But I still preferred here in the Philippines. Only in the Philippines, in wherein the Philippines. we believe and practice the close family ties, uh, being hospitable, accommodating, friendly and loving. So I still prefer Philippines. Yeah, of course. So a big applause, applause, to all of you.
Thank you so much for your time and your effort to be here. And uh, you know what, since I will stay here a long time, maybe we'll do a second chapter with different questions, ok? Thank you so much, thank you everyone. Ragazzi, è stato un piacere, se vi è piaciuto il video, mi raccomando, like, iscrizione e mi raccomando nei commenti, siate super educati e gentili come i filippini. Just say, please in the comment be super kind and you know, like, like, like you, you know, like so good and so kind in the comments. Ok, thank you so much, see you in the next video. Oh, 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 oh,